if you're an Asian and you go to a Thai restaurant and you only get Pad Thai, shame on you, right? Because you being too basic. Yes. And you're not even doing the work to understand other groups that are not your own. All right, everybody. What you're about to watch is a full length podcast with the worst Asian podcast, Ling Jie and Ben. And we talk about a lot of things, everything from our food opinions, doing comedy, moving to New York City. So definitely watch it. If you want to get to know us better, hit that like button and also subscribe to their podcast because it's really, really funny. Shout out to all the Queens Asians. Welcome to the worst Asian podcast, where a couple Asian American millennials give you our opinions on all things Asian. My name is Linji. I'm here with my co-host, as per usual, Ben. Hey, man, what's up, dude? For the one time, the one time that we went outdoors to do an interview, I didn't have to chug around the giant light that yeah. we normally bring around. Yeah, it's also weird. Like we're not using headphones this. Uh, we're not this using side. headphones. Only I'm using headphones, and there's actually a great view behind oh, us, but much better than my usual living room setup. You look like you're working for CNN right now. Do I? Yeah. No, why are you looking over there? I'm looking at your, your earpiece, man. Oh, my earpiece? Oh, yeah. I'm looking out the window and everything. No, 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 no. Okay. Just to get right into it, Um, our guests today, guests plural, you guys know them. If you're in the Asian American community, if you've watched YouTube for a while, like I did back when I was a kid in high school and like college and everything, these guests right now, you guys know them for sure. You know, back in the days when it was just, uh, it was like Wang Fu, our guests right now, Kev Jumba. Oh, shit. Uh, Ryan... Ryan Higa. Uh, yes, I, I almost said <laughs> very yeah, carefully, very yeah. carefully. They're like from the OGs of YouTube. Let's bring them onto the podcast. The Fung Bros, a.k.a. David and Andrew Fung. <laughs> Thank you for having What's us, man. Up? I appreciate Yo, it. I'm so happy to be on the Worst Asian Podcast. And Thank I love you. the name because it shows so much of that Asian humility. Because you guys didn't <laughs> want to call it the best Asian podcast. Impossible. You show humility and be humble. Uh, it's very Confucian. Thank I tell you. people the exact yes. same shit. You got to like set the bar very low. You set the expectations really low. So when people see your content, you know, it's not that bad. It's not as bad. It's not as bad as you would normally think it is. No expectations whatsoever. If this fails, it's like, okay. And, and I love that it's like all the New York based podcasts collabing. You know what I mean? Because right now in LA, all the LA podcasts are collabing and stuff like that. So it's cool to see, you know, not that it's, you know, a competition or anything like that. But it kind we of used is. to live out in LA. Kind of is. You guys have only been here for a couple of years, but I like to say you guys are honorary New Yorkers by now. Do you guys feel? You. Are you are you able to hand that pass out to us? Uh, <laughs> would the rest of the card be like, yeah, You're like I'm from China, but yes, <laughs> I, uh, you know, uh, Ling Jie has given the Fung Bros the pass. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know what? But thank I think, you. Yeah. It's been five years. Five years or so. Five years is probably it. not enough. I would say. It feels longer than that, actually. I feel like I've no, because we've been forever. moving in and out of New York. You know what like, it, I like to say is that I feel like we've been impactful or effective in New York for several years. But Fair you, enough. Yeah, yes. I mean, we, we, we still travel a lot. We still go yeah. back and forth. Uh, Seattle, I like everything. York, yeah. I love New York. Where are you guys based out of? Like, where were you guys originally when you were kids? West Coast, right? Yeah, we grew up in South Seattle, Kent, Washington, and then we moved to L.A. after college uh, we'll go after going to UW, and then we lived in L.A. in 626, St. Gabriel Valley. Shout Spent out. a year in K-Town, though. Yeah, yeah, we did. Spent a year in K-Town. That was our first year in L.A. You're in downtown oh, really? L.A. And we got mistaken for Korean so much. <laughs> Actually, yeah. Andrew, you look very Korean. I was going to say the same shit. I am, uh, Andrew looks much more Korean. I am a Korean passing, yeah. Yes. So I was... I was. Uh, I felt safe. Yeah, I got turned down by a lot of Korean girls, though. Really? Being like, "Are you Korean?" I'd be like, Did they "No, I'm Chinese." And then they're like, "Oh, okay." And then they walk away. You could have just played oh. it off. You're a Korean American that didn't speak <laughs> Korean. It's okay. This Kore is before Korean girls started dating Chinese guys. Yeah. I feel like the last five years, I noticed a lot more Korean girls dating Chinese guys. Is this from personal experience? Just yeah, <laughs> got them. I, I got see, em. but five years prior, <laughs> it was like, like I plead the fifth. It it was only the other way around. So don't. It's not unfair now. You guys, you guys been been getting Chinese girls for like for a while now. <laughs> Yo, we keep you scoring. <laughs> but I'm saying let's not keep scoring. Don't keep Korean score. girls don't are keep open. To, Korean no, girls don't. are open to getting with Chinese guys. The last five years, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Chinese boys are nice, is what they say. Chinese boys are nice. <laughs> I, I don't know how you guys are treating them over on that side. Come on. I'm not at liberty to speak on the stories that I heard, but I just heard some things, man. Oh, damn. <laughs> well, it was nice also, like, just, like, chilling in K-Town. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. we used to always go to, like, MK and shit. Yeah. And I'm like, yo, David, yo, you got a dollar? You know, like, yo. You were the begging them for money? Yeah, well, no, I wasn't. Was <laughs> no, we would always be at Buddha. Yeah, Buddha. We'll at Buddha. Be a lot. Shout out to Buddha. No, maybe... I remember ben, ben had some baddies at Buddha, man. Yo, dude, ben, ben used to pull no. up to Buddha. Yo, we're baddies, recording, guys. Man. Guys, chill, chill, chill. That's on the record. You're Call still you Big Ben. Oh, man. Big Benny. 
Damn. So do you guys feel New Yorkers? Do you feel like a real New Yorker yet? Personally speaking, besides me giving you the no, card. Right. We could do personal. I don't know if we feel different about it. <laughs> um, We're different people, by the way. I never really looked at it that way, but I always felt like, I, you know, growing up in Seattle, it snows. It, it is a little bit different from the rest of the West Coast. Everybody's favorite rapper in South Seattle was Nas. Oh, really? That's not a common West Coast answer for everybody to love yeah, Nas. I'm actually surprised you know, everybody knows answer. Nas is good, but like, yeah, but that area because you got to think Seattle's very rainy and like I rainy. Think like like people listen to primo beats and stuff. It's kind of very, at least in the urban scene in Seattle, it is very uh, boom bappy. It kinda, is. Like, it, it's very boom bappy. It could be very Bay Area influence too, depending if you're more from like Tacoma. But like, oh, it, it just is very boom bappy. So I think that when you have that boom bap background, yeah, it's a pretty easy transition. Long story short, I feel like uh, I'm not going to say I'm a New Yorker and give myself that title. I don't think I'm, who cares? You can I'm not say in charge it. of that. But I don't feel out of place here when I walk around and I look at things about the neighborhood and the, the different cultures and the different enclaves and different things going around. That stuff I've been exposed to for a very long time. And whether it was through media or being physically here. So I feel like. I feel like I can move. Like, there's no words that even I hear, like, you know, like, 50-year-olds say that are from, like, you know, the old okay. day. They're more like KRS-One, like, no, words. Yeah. Up. Like, I still, I still know everything yeah. that they're like, saying. I like, yeah. There's nothing that's like, oh, what, what does that word mean? What I they feel say? like I can have a conversation with locals of every group I was going to say, you guys sound like you're from New York, like, born and raised New Yorkers, to be honest. Can I tell you one thing, though? There's a funny story. We're in Brooklyn several years ago getting yeah. a, grab a, a slice of pizza okay. from this big Italian guy. And this is the first time I had heard this phrase. Yeah, Vinny's So we go, like, oh, can we get a pepperoni slice? And this was like seven, eight years ago. And he goes, uh, stay and go. And I'm like, what? <laughs> stay and go. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> and at that moment, I felt like a Chinese immigrant because I was like, <laughs> yeah. are, you, are you speaking? Is that, a, is that Italian? What do you think? Can you write it? Can you write it, can you write it down, like, sir? Hey, no, let me slow it those down. Those are the moments. Those are the moments that remind me I'm not from here because no. I'll still get tripped up. Two questions. Which PS did you go to? I can't. Oh. Uh, 142. I just make it up. <laughs> and then that's one question I get tripped up on. He just uses on. the area code. And then the other one is st stay or go. If I get tripped up by that, sometimes I'll be like, oh, <laughs> I lost my card for the day. I'm not, because I got tripped oh. up by something that a native New Yorker would never get tripped PS up by. PS is a native New Yorker thing. I guess. We just think it's like oh, regular yeah. slang, but I didn't know that. We would never say Bro, PS. You know the first time I, the first time I heard a PS, because this is, I think a PlayStation too. But they didn't rap about it in like, Jay-Z doesn't talk about PS, right? Yeah, so, he doesn't. But, but the first time I heard about it was Hey Arnold. Really? Yeah. They went to a PS public school? Yeah. In Hey Arnold. They were I like, do not remember this oh, shit. PS 143 or something. And then, and then I was like, PS, what I'm is I'm going to start PS? using them. That's my new public school. Yeah. <laughs> I'm start like, no, you if know, you guys have a PS, that's like super legit. Like, you know. By the way, uh, what Andrew was saying before, don't explain it. Listeners, if you can guess what the person was trying to say to him when he was ordering pizza, stay and go. <laughs> okay. We're not going to explain this. I mean. Right. To you and most me, people will to get our it, ears, we can hear it right away, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess the first time that you heard that, that must have been like a bit confusing or whatnot. Yeah. Like, please write it down. Oh, one other thing I have to say: we used to break dance, and no way, like for real break dance, and so it's like you just that battled is, that. Uh, not, official, not an official battle. I wasn't that good. Performed. I, I could performed. do flares and windmills. Pro Talent show. Could still do it. Do the, like, what's that shit called? The one where you just stand up with your legs? Turtle? What Freezes and stuff like oh, that. Yeah, that Poses. Was, I yeah. Yeah. We used to do the tabletop. We used to yeah, do yeah. So when you are just doing... Uh, and you know, Jay Park is from Seattle. There's a huge b-boy scene in Seattle. that, oh. And they keep it super true school in Seattle. Like... It's almost like uh, just the up rock and the down rock. Every, anything. Anyway, basically, it's very elemental hip hop. People are still in a turntablism. Mm. So it's almost like right. it maintains this like 1993. The old school uh, kind of vibe. Old kind of school thing. New York vibe. And that's still the type of hip hop we have in Seattle. Like to oh, this sure. day. Like almost. a lot of hip, like Seattle rappers are still kind of boom bappy. Like they're so, like, they're like there is inspired. the modern, there is the modern style that is but doing it's like not trap popular. It's or, not, but it's not popular. But it's, it, the boom bap like is definitive of the classic Seattle rapper. Oh, crap. I guess I is what that. I'd say from yeah, my I'm era. so blown away that you guys said uh, Nas was like a lot of rappers from Seattle's yeah. inspiration. So I wouldn't. I wouldn't yeah, because I think that. it's just rainy and it's introspective and it's intellectual. Yeah. And Last thing about the Seattle area, in my opinion, there's not, there's a lot of different accents around. So you don't really? have one single accent. So some people kind of talk like they're from the East Coast, like New York. Some people talk like they're more from the Bay or LA. Yeah. It does. <laughs> and then there's the people who kind of have like the neutral accent. But there's a little bit of everything. And then there's some country folk, like, out easy go. In the farmland, yeah. 30 minutes. In Seattle? Because Seattle's basically the last major American city to be developed. 
because so far West up. Yeah, and because oh. if you look at the way things develop in America, it's right. the last major economy in America to be developed. So it's actually a city full of transplants. That's why they say Seattle, like Mariners or Seahawks fans are fair, fair weather fans. Because like when it's Whoa. like established, like Philly, one of the 13 original colonies, people like they'll die, ride or die. You grew for the up team. with that team. Yeah. For, right. for like your 10 generations back, Seattle's like nobody really been a Seahawks. Fan. Like even your dad. Yeah. You probably not even from Seattle. You know what I mean? Like you came for an industry or whatever. Yeah. We love sports so much. We let the Sonics go. That's how much we. Oh, damn. I'm just kidding. People forget yeah, about that. Oof. I know some of my Seattle friends. Durant's been like, his first yeah, year. Yeah, anyway, you still heard about that? All this, all this discussion. I just still heard. I can see you on the streets like that. All this discussion to say that I feel like, uh, <laughs> I feel like New York really shows us a lot of love and we, we try to contribute to that too. And not, not just like consume it, but like actually add something to the pot yeah, yeah, yeah do you add more than you take away from the city i think that is a question and i think about it all the time actually and i think that not only do i like new york because new york embraces me but i feel like i'm effective here and i feel like that i can move in and feel like that new york understands what we do better than any other place that i've been in i wish i felt like that you guys are more new york than me <laughs> that's what i think ben feels like the city doesn't want him at all i feel like i'm a i'm a negative at this point yeah. no that's good that's good because like we were talking off air before how maybe where you had like hypothetical thoughts about possibly the next five years maybe if things went the right way you would settle down here so like that's always a good sign that you've come to the city you like it enough that you can possibly picture yourself here like midterm, long term here. So that's always good. Yeah, maybe my kid goes to a PS. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> ah, I don't know. All right, just um, to bring it back a little bit, right? I want to talk about like those first early days of YouTube because now it's a little bit different. If you ask like a lot of young people now, Gen Z, whoever, what they want to do when they grow up, like content creator, YouTuber, that's up there, like top tier, right? TikToker. Yeah, yeah. TikToker, content creator, whatever. Like somehow that's like a job that they want. No want to uh, pop up with the iPhone and ask people ratchet questions on the street all people yeah. with the mics on the street yeah that's exactly make, what they want to do how many bodies you got i want to be can a check hot out influencer <laughs> that gets flown out to places <laughs> that's like <laughs> that's a lot of dreams is i want to be a i want to get sponsored but like back in your day when youtube was like just a new thing when you guys went into youtube were you doing it for fun or did you actually think you would like turn into what's it been like a 10 15 year career yeah. so okay. far I, I, I thought we'd be even bigger by now, to be yeah. honest. That's how, that's how ambitious I even went into it. Even back in the day when you first yeah, started? No, for sure. So we we didn't like, we're not natively YouTube guys. Like we were doing stand-up comedy, music performance, like very live performance type people were yeah. thinking about, I was thinking about acting and stuff like that. But we had done a little bit of YouTube in Seattle, but when we got to LA and we knew those guys and we had networked with like Wong Fu and those guys are all, a lot of good guys, a lot of nice guys. Shout out to Wong Fu, AJ Raphael, those guys. Um. Then, and we're like, oh, this is a career. And we see Kev Jumba doing it, you know? And we're like, okay, so people are doing, this is another platform that we don't have to wait for the industry to pick us up. We create our own content and it is a career. It is true that we saw it as a career too, but we also saw it as a way to express our creative. Because we had already been doing stand-up in Seattle and Russell Peters had already popped off on like, you know, Napster oh, and Morpheus yeah. and all that. That Canadian, Napster. that Canadian special had already gone viral at that time. But we just knew that nobody wanted to watch Asians that looked like they were like 16 years old on a comedy stage. Because right, yeah. I knew that because I was doing open mics and, and you people felt would it? say racist stuff when they were bringing us up. Or like racial, maybe it's not racist. Yeah, but yeah. Right. They'd commentary. be like, oh yeah, here are these Asian guys. And you're like, you're like, man, I don't even like this open mic environment. How am I going to rise up this system? And right. obviously some people did and they did well for themselves. Other people didn't. But like, I was like, let's just go with the self produce independent route you know what i mean and youtube was that you know potential yeah, because right there, everybody from california not everybody was ryan he was from hawaii uh kev jumbo was from houston but like for the most part everybody was from california so we were the seattle guys who came down okay and your parents never had any pushback about this because the plus side is you guys have like an older sister so she has a more conventional uh, career yeah, right? yeah. there was i think at first they saw it as a phase they saw it as like us going because we had just finished college so they kind of saw it as like us going to grad school Oh, in a way that, that they, the they, were like, they were like oh three years okay come back you can get a good job and then it's funny even when we had started making a decent living and we were well into it like six seven years in we were lucky in the sense that we popped like within a year and a half of moving yeah you know what i mean like like we had like newspaper articles write-ups radio interviews but you better believe my dad did ask literally seven years in like hey do you guys want to go to Law school, maybe? Have you guys thought about this? Yeah. Andrew, why don't you go back to maybe apply for UCLA grad school? You write a 
dissertation on the entertainment industry. It will make for very <laughs> compelling material to the academic council. You at one point you are so successful in this. I hope your dad really does in this hobby. You know, I hope so my dad thinks he's like write the dissertation and then maybe. After they see your paper, maybe they want to make your film. I'm like, Dad, that's not how it works. <laughs> <laughs> and so you guys like, never wanted to like follow that though. Like there was never one point back then that you thought, hey, maybe I should do a more conventional job. Like this was always where it was. Cause I assume <clears throat> at some point it was like a roller coaster, right? It was a very bumpy road. You probably had good times, good years, good months, whatever. There has to be like some down times when you guys even had a like small thought. Maybe you thought it was nah, a phase. Honestly, or no? honestly, it's just uh nah. I think so. There's been times where we thought when we were in LA living that we were going to be a little bit more industry, like we were going to do more auditions, go into. I got a, I had a commercial agent for a minute. Yeah. But a big commercial agent that reps some really big people. Okay. Shout out to not them. <laughs> no, shout, you can out say that. You can say that. shout out to not them. I forgot the name. I even forgot that was a while but ago. Yeah, but no, yeah. we were signed with a big agency at one point with a really big, uh, and this is like not even as a group, me and my. Uh, Fun Bros was signed to a really big thing. So we thought we were going to, we had a TV show for a second on yep. um, FYI. FYI. FYI, which converted into Viceland, but now is like back as FYI now, but like digital only. Oh, I don't know. Because, you know, I don't even know the fragment. Love you know, at the, First the Sight was channel another show on there. I don't know, Amber but like, Rose had a show on there. Yeah, but long story short, it's like, um, no, I still love the independent style. I love saying what I want to say. And I think yeah. I feel more convicted now in 2024 to say things that the, that I was never going to get a show to say. You mm. know what I mean? Like yeah. anytime we've been asked to do a pilot, it's yeah. usually like essentially like a goofy food show. Okay. Uh, you know, sometimes they're a little bit more hardcore substantial content. Sometimes it's a little bit more on the silly side, but it's always in that direction. Right. But what if you want to be a thought leader and what if you want to say what you want to say about what's happening in the world and talk about the topics you want to talk Express about? Express more like free speech yeah. and stuff the, like the that. The last thing I want to do is feel constricted in um, the topics that I can Yeah, I'm just trying to exercise my First Amendment. Yeah. 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 God bless America. Because that's like the main thing about a lot of Asians, right? Like you could say that whether... It, they're holding their tongue or they don't have anything to say to begin with. It's it's a combination, right? It's different. Yeah, There's yeah. a variance depending on who uh, we're talking about. That's the situation, right? Nobody ever says anything. And they might say it like on an anonymous <laughs> Reddit or whatever For IG sure. account, but how, how many people are actually like you guys putting your name brand for the rest of your life on the line to say what you want to say, whether it's silly, trivial, or substantial. Right. What, I, what I like being in New York is and being having friends out here and being productive out here is that it makes me feel better and that I'm a little bit free because <clears throat> when you're in LA, there is a pressure to be industry because if you're not somehow getting auditions and yeah. on your way to some larger uh, network or system picking you up, you feel a little guilty. And that's what I didn't like about, that's one aspect I didn't like about being in LA. But now in oh, New York- I didn't get invited to the yeah. Unforgettable Gala. Yeah. Oh, and then once you be, get the Asian award, oh, I didn't I'm get free. invited to Golden Globes. Like, I didn't get invited to this. Like LA is kind of like, when they say like, oh, my people will talk to your people. It really does feel like A little that. bit, a like, little art, bit like artificial that, yeah. kind of. And, and if you're not official in LA, then you feel bad. But I'm like, I'm in New York and there's real things. I can get up on stage here. We run a comedy show. We got really good friends. Shout out to Ronnie Chang. Uh, he's a big comedian and, yeah. you know, we're friends with him and, and there's just, I'm friends with a lot of other comedians. So it's like, now I'm like, oh, this is nice. This is, I all, I like this too. Yeah. Like, I don't need those systems. Yeah, just to backtrack that, I think a lot of people, even if they've watched their content for a while, kind of forget the point where, you, at some point, you guys did have that show on FYI, right? It was like a travel show. That was like in the first three and a half years. You guys traveled around like the US, you did like a different things, but that is almost counter what YouTube is because YouTube is free expression. You're allowed to do exactly what you do. You're allowed to mold it in the way that you see fit. Whether your opinions are dumb, stupid, whatever, you're putting yourself behind that opinion, right? But when you do like these larger network or like big network contracts and you do those shows, you guys were binded, right? Yeah. Oh, for sure. They're super contracts. scripted. I remember one time we were in uh, Denver and they're like, oh, say this white chef's ramen is the best ramen you've ever had. This like smoked brisket ramen. And I told them, I said, I'm not going to say it. I'm, you're not going to get me to say it. Yeah. And we had like a, it was like a straight up with the field producer, a whole big ass, like it turned into like a huge argument. Really? They're all you guys are being non-compliant. You guys are being blah, 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 blah. And it was just like, dude. And I asked, was it actually good though? Or 
Uh, it's okay. It doesn't taste like ramen though. It wasn't the best ramen. Oh, okay, we that's, ever had. that was the thing too. I was like, imagine you guys are like, oh, this is actually pretty. He good. wanted you to say that line word for word, just so girl, that, but yeah, for the oh. sake of the show, it made them yeah, look I mean, like probably, she it wanted probably, us it to say came that. from the top down. Let's be honest. I mean, if you guys know about how they book these shows, yeah, oftentimes there's somebody. There's a, even a, another agreement with a restaurant group behind the scenes. Mm. So you're going to like seven spots and it's you're just like, why is the soap all the same in all these seven spots? It's actually all tied in with well, one restaurant group. I mean, I, after filming a lot of food videos ourselves, I understand why people do that because it's easier. Like sometimes you'll get paid to come go with, for us to check out a restaurant, right? But Versus us got to pay them, But right? essentially through their hospitality group, if they make it easy for them to come in and film, because sometimes they can't get the clearance to go get the mom and pop. Mom and pops don't even want a bunch of TV cameras. You know? That's true. But I'll tell you this. Shout out to that show because I experienced things in that show. <laughs> okay. I don't know when else I would have. We're, we're in Charleston, South Carolina. Oh, we're in a kitchen crap. of a dude, old dude, who doesn't want us there because he didn't know the hosts were Asians and he didn't know a lot of the crew was black. I'm not, that would the, actually the been a really interesting. Are from, from New York. Hey, <laughs> the DP is is Barbadian. Bar, he's from Barbados. Right, Barbados yeah, yeah. Everybody's from Brooklyn. Everybody's from Brooklyn. Like they're black, right? And then the other DP's Korean, and then we're Chinese, we're right. Asian, and then it's like, he's just like, well, I didn't expect this, and then he's grumbling, and we're like trying to film and put on a spot. And you trying to ask him questions, be polite. I did. It got so I don't know what they told him, but they he thought diners, drive-ins, and dives was gonna pop up. The guy Ferry and then was gonna pop up. He's looking like <laughs> yeah. uh, back to Wong Fu shows up, and then he's just like. I don't know what's going on. You know, he's tripping out. Uh, it was like Vietnam. In yeah, Vietnam. Yeah, yeah. Uh, this, this guy also on yeah. camera with the uh, A&E cameras on him says the war of northern aggression. He, he literally calls it the war of northern aggression. In, obviously, it got put on the cutting room yeah, floor. Yeah, of course. They got to take that out. Still, yeah. we're like in an interview. I was like, oh, what? Well. <laughs> We got the ADR that one. I'm not like to dump on Charleston as an entire city, no, no, that's but like just one it's a person charming place. That's but, experience, but, yeah. but that obviously Charleston has a history. All right, we all know. So I'm like, that was uh, that Charleston is never a place that I will go to on my own accord. But, but, but long story short, just to, to wrap up this particular segment, it's like, yeah, a lot of people on YouTube they don't know about that side of that show because, first of all, the network, uh, the cable TV world, and YouTube are already super different. But we weren't allowed to talk about the promote the show on our channel and once the show came out and the edits came out we were so in a way like i don't want to say ashamed but not super proud of it to the point where we didn't hyper promote it either oh you know what even I mean? though at that point you could have but you didn't feel as proud of the work because it was so different than yeah. what you had visualized when you're actually filming we right? yeah. and i remember better. how much like fighting yeah. we were we could have the... played nicer and been more cooperative yeah um but i don't think that we gave up a career on food right TV. do you think there was a part of it where because this was like not in the last five years or so where it's maybe a little bit easier for someone that looks like us to get like a show like that. But back when you had the show, like it would have been very unique. So you felt maybe subconsciously, and there's just a question that you needed to like do what they wanted as like a stepping stone to hopefully something bigger. Uh, to a limited extent. Yes. But we were, we were fighting them mm. the whole way through, you know, they send the, you know, you, just everything that was about that show, you know, I mean, maybe did we need to do it exactly how we did it? That's just how I was feeling at that time. And I, yeah. I essentially, I think I have a more refined version of my opinions about representing Asians in a mainstream world in, in the Western world. But it, it's essentially driven by the same core. I, I might be more refined or polished in my approach. Back then, I, we're like going crazy, you know, but it's like, yeah. but uh, I, I think you have to understand at that time, our YouTube channel is popping too. Mm -hmm. So our YouTube channel is going well. And then we take time off to do the show. But then the show structure is completely different from YouTube. So then that's why, again, if we got the opportunity again, I think we would play it a little differently. But like, I, I would have, I would have, I would have show, said. instead of just going to Asian restaurants on my ch on YouTube in the South, I probably would have showed people the local food. It'd be crazy if you guys actually went back to the same guy and he's like, yo, my bad. Yo, I'm so sorry. I was kind of a dick, you know? I don't think so. I think he's pretty... He's pretty <laughs> yeah, crazy. He's like, he was he's there on thinking. January 6th. I was probably... Like, <laughs> I want to oh, say... He was, on the front, yeah. he was on the front line and shit. <laughs> Anyways, it's it's all good. It's Everybody learns something right, from exactly. all Right, exactly. As long as... Hopefully... I'm, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Made 100%. you a better person, you know? Also, oh, just want to say, like, to thank you. To travel America is awesome. Yeah. Just also, uh, thank you for inviting us for the Ronnie Chang thing. That was really cool, you know? I think he thought of security at one point. I was <laughs> oh, you mean sure. for the last show? Yeah. I oh, just want yeah. to say thank you for that. Yeah, yeah, I was no pretty problem. convinced. Because yeah. you're wearing all black and you're like six foot two and you're standing like I was pretty, I was pretty, pretty stiff, stiff in funny. the middle. And yeah, you guys are like, okay, you hope Ronnie's like, whatever you want. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> sure. Uh, Ronnie, this way. 
All right, this way, sir. <laughs> oh, David asked you. <laughs> yeah, I think David I didn't asked know that. me. <laughs> That's funny. All right, um, how long has it been that you've been on YouTube? Is it uh, 15 years? No, no, it's 10. It's been uh, 10 years or so? Yeah, that's it's 10. Lot, man. It's You're 10. just like, ah, it's just 10. It's 10. I mean... 10 strong years. It's yeah, like, exactly, it's different. Man. Wong Fu, uh, I think I'm going to say Tim De La Ghetto, they're yeah. 15. Oh, wow. We yeah. came in five years later. We're probably still part of that first gen, but we caught the very, very, very tail end of that. Mm. So, uh... Yeah, I mean, just it's been it's been cool to see uh, how much I guess it's changed a lot in a way that I uh, I didn't anticipate. But I, one thing I learned is that like as far as mainstream penetration, it's just mm. gonna move however it moves. Like no amount of YouTube buzz is really gonna change that. Like you know what I mean? Like no amount of Asians right now that are going super viral asking people funny questions on an iPhone is really going to make them the next like hosts of America. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like So 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 how many bodies do you got? Yeah. How many bodies? And then that's like that's, that's every question. That's part <laughs> of the reason why uh sometimes oh, people complain that it's too easy to start making content cuz things are cheap now. Mics are cheap. We're holding four mics right now. It's probably like extra cheap and you just need Yo. like a, your phone as a camera. We were talking about that before. I want to say that every generation says this about the next generation and I am saying it. I'm acknowledging that people said that about YouTube. A bunch of film directors were like, what are these kids on oh, YouTube damn, making right. movies? Wong Fu, what do they think they know about film? Blah, blah, blah. Everybody says it. And then now I'm like, yo, man, it's too easy to make content. <laughs> <laughs> no, you just have the... We're, the we're iPhone, becoming like the old like, NBA players. The little iPhone Bluetooth. You know, there's a real low quality. You can get it off. You know, and there's no, or whatever. like, no nothing. Privacy is out the window. Oh, guys, yeah. forget it. Oh, you don't want it up. Remember, though, you can always make a claim if you don't want to be in a video <laughs> if someone finds you posts you on tiktok you can talk about that again like it was harder to actually produce stuff strictly for youtube yes youtube is higher barriers what social media is right now especially tiktok reels on instagram maybe even shorts on youtube whatnot it's it's easier to produce but at the same time the virality of it is a lot more right so what i'm trying to say is like i think the cream always rises to the top but in the world that it is right now with tiktok it rises faster because let's say a talented person back then maybe would have taken like lots of videos, lots of effort before they, you know, uh, popped and blew up, right? I think the cream still rises to the top, but it's so much faster. Uh, and I that. think it dissipates faster too. Yes, yes, it yes. It rises faster, but it dissipates faster too. There's more views to go around, but like, I guess it's almost like this YouTube short, like, tic like there's so many people who have like a TikTok to hit like 42 million, right. but a lot of people will be like, Oh yeah, I saw that. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it doesn't mean as much. You don't much. connect with the creator. That's why, like, people who were famous in the '90s, like, they're gonna be famous like forever because they were famous at a time where there wasn't that many famous people. Yeah, mm. you know what I mean? Like, just the amount, like different amount of avenues of becoming famous. Dude, you'll remember like people from the Breakfast Club that movie. Yeah, uh, like Emilio Estevez and so. Tom I've Cruise is still the biggest. Tom Cruise is still a star. He's like still 60. Yeah, yeah. He's like, yeah, still doing his own stunts and whatnot. Jackie Chan will still have theater releases in America and he's 60 like... Pre-cell phone people are like cemented in Mount Rushmore. Yeah. For sure. Oh, that's, a good, that's a good point. But you know, like I think the way that it is right now, it does bring like some creators that maybe, let's say they didn't have the effort to do the whole uh, YouTube long format content kind of thing, but they're still able to do TikTok and still come to the top like uh, what's her face? Bella, Bella Porch? Bella Porch, right? Yeah, she went oh, viral yeah. first yeah. on. I mean, let's be honest. I'm gonna but be she's honest. Super talented. Some, some people are gonna take this the wrong way. It, it, it's it's a right now. If you're a hot girl, you <laughs> got every option. You're like Embiid on offense. You could you could do whatever <laughs> you want. You want to take a long she's range, Lamar Jackson. mid range, short range, whatever you if got. If you're a hot girl, you're a Joel Embiid. That's what they <laughs> say. <laughs> you are the Joel Embiid of optionality in terms of monetization on online income. Just streams. for the record, Bella Porch, she is a hot girl. <laughs> yeah. I just she's definitely she's attractive. She's attractive. <laughs> she's I'm definitely. saying that, and she's talented. I'm saying she's if you want to go clean, you can. If you want to go edgy, you can. Or adult with OF and things like that, and everything in between. Uh -huh. You want to be uh, on whatever podcast, just talking about like hot girls playing rich guys or whatever. You have that. <laughs> you know what I mean? You got yeah, every true. single option, like Embiid. <laughs> So it's too bad like that you guys aren't the uh, Funk sisters or something, right? No, that would, like made things a lot easier right now. <laughs> you know, that. it's funny because like we are two <laughs> Asian guys, and shout out to everybody who's ever watched the video because they watched two Asian guys do something. Yes, two Asian guys, not one without and not yeah. two like model Asian. No guys. tattoos, <laughs> no colored like hair, no contact lenses. I think we're decent looking, but not like we're not model tier, so we're not like you know, never dressed. Looking. Never dressed up as. Uh, 
you know, something never, crazy, never dressed like, up yeah. crazy, never dressed didn't up. Put, didn't put on a dress. Listen, yeah, we no, don't, we don't honestly, we didn't. I'm not even saying that that's the standard of anything, but it's true. We never think put about on a dress it. We up. don't cuss really. Not really. <laughs> no, <laughs> not, not on our stuff. Like, yeah. I mean, I'm, I might way, cuss on this podcast. Uh, sorry, New Yorkers don't say cuss. What? That's oh. weird. I've never heard a New Yorker say cuss. Oh, what is it? Just, I just, I just cursed or swear, oh, right? Cursed. Yeah. So, okay. Yeah. But like, we don't swear. We, we don't talk crazy. We don't, we're still yeah. going. We're still relevant. So yeah. I think I do take pride in that. That's good. That's good. And we can always dirty it up. You can always go dirty if you want. You can always dirty it yeah. up. Easy. You can go dirty on stage more. Oh, in front yes. of people. Yeah. Let's talk about that. Cause I think yeah. you guys have semi pivoted on your content a little bit. You were doing like a lot of uh, skits sketch comedy things like that like when you first started right <clears throat> um obviously the food was always there that's always a banger and you're still doing some of that right now but for instance andrew you're doing some stand-up comedy in real life which yeah. is people think it's semi adjacent to what you're doing but stand-up comedy it's its own creature you no, can be good at everything else but that is uniquely difficult yeah it is to be go very good at it it is very time consuming so i'm not gonna like tell people that i'm trying to be like the next ronnie chang or anything like that i don't even think i have the ability to but I think it's very gratifying. It's very fun, and it's uh, something that we do have the muscles for. It's something you know? different about just being on stage, right? There's and something just different. Being able man. to speak whatever's on your mind. You can go more raw. People see your intentions better when you say something on YouTube or TikTok, and you let it out in the world. People will feel a million different ways about it. But when you're in a comedy club, you're basically told, "Hey, guys, you are supposed to think this stuff is funny, and they are supposed to be joking. So take what they say with a grain of salt, always." And I feel like a lot of the people in a stand-up crowd, I'm, I don't want to say like obviously everybody, they're more like extroverted nerds. Whereas mm. if you really think about your average internet consumer that is on a Reddit, on a YouTube, they're almost like an introverted nerd. Right? Do you see what I'm saying? Because they, you still have to drag your ass to the club park or take whatever menu form of transportation uh, parking. to drink minimum oh, yeah, you're and right. you're at a ticket price that, I was gonna say, and you're you right might about the sit in the minimum. front row get picked out of the crowd by whatever Asian uh, is a one know, drink minimum. certain comedians <laughs> they like to roast the crowd more they're gonna be going at you how you look who your yeah. date is that's a whole 99% of the YouTube watchers do not want to be front row at the comedy cellar no, you're, no, you're yeah. outside especially at the cellar yeah, at the cellar yeah you're right about that no you're outside like you have to because I think a lot of the time in comments, people will express their emotions through the comment section, but, but at in real life, they have to express it out loud. And they're with other people. The also crowd is right there. It. Yeah. And, and you have a whole group of a hundred other people that are trying to do it with you. And you feel it right there. It's not yes. like you just posted something. You could like, it's immediate. Dude, right there. when you're by yourself and you're reading a comment, I can see how nerve wracking it is because you feel, you see some type of country. Yeah. Then you look around, no one to talk to, no one to express right. anything with. And then you're just like, and it's just like, it's terrible. Yeah. Well, it's not terrible, but it's just natural. It but it's different. It like when you're on stage, it's like, it's like one of the few last well, like ways of like really expressing yourself, like real ways of just true, you know, expression. Shakespearean. Yeah. Theater. Right. Back the oldest the theater. Yeah. It's just theater. You know, so when you go up there and if a crowd does interact or heckle, you know, you could, you can make it back to play you know? off the crowd. And now you could do something completely different there too. You know, which is lost. You guys did stand comedy way back then. Right? Yeah. yeah way, way there. back. Like 15 years ago. We took like a long break and then being in New York, it made it obviously very easy to comedy do scene here is better yeah, than the West great. Coast yeah, yeah exactly yeah. it is it is people man I've never seen anything like it people in New York love stand up they comedy and they love comedy. smart yeah. comics too you can't just cut, I mean you like you could get laughs with a little bit more like base level lowest common yeah, yeah lowest common denominator jokes but it's like they you could mix it in there but if you don't have the raw substance behind what you're saying people are gonna be like oh this is just a silly guy who's not smart it's really cool that you guys are pretty like deep into that kind of scene like you know like a lot of great comics yeah, you guys have the show you want to talk about the show that you have every month oh mm -hmm. just plug i mean just asianology we have one coming up uh end of every month uh fall of fung bros january 30th 7 30 p.m at sour mouse is the next one really funny and just given asian comic it's a little bit like a mix because it's like on the west coast they have this type of show like a lot asian a comedy lot, yeah asian comedy in new york there's less of it right because there's but it's more common to see like maybe an asian on a regular stand up yeah you know, like bill or whatever so it's almost like uh just wanted to get everybody together some people do more asian style comedy at the show other mm -hmm. people are just like yo i'm that weird awkward uh type of like cadence ca yeah. comedy but i just happen to be asian yeah, yeah, yeah. Right, right, right. like different people have different you know styles some people are more like joe coy other people are more like the other guy who don't want to but talk. i love it because the comedy club and this is the, like the last thing i'll say is like when you're on stage together and you're sharing the stage at the same show it's almost like everybody's united, no matter what color, creed, 
sure. identity, fringe identity, if you're this or that. It does, like, we're all comedians trying to make people laugh. Yeah. And that's why nothing is taken too seriously, even if, I, even I might have some comedians who are not super woke, and then I have very woke comedians on the same bill. But it's, we're right. all Asian, and we're just like, we understand, hey, guys, we're all being, like, pro-Asian here. And make people laugh. I noticed that in New York, like mm -hmm. a woke comedian and an unwoke comedian are more willing, in my I'm opinion, cool. to be on the same billing. Mm, yeah. But in on the West Coast, it would be more like we all got like it. vegan comedians. Like they have woke Asian comedy shows, and then they have like. But I'm like, our show is just everything. Like I, I want it to be rush hour comedy. We cracking <laughs> racial jokes. <laughs> I like that with my with my black friend, and then we're cracking. Asian guy jokes, Asian girl jokes, everything. I mean, it's a sweeping generalization, but people are more okay with somebody who's with like an opposing viewpoint, right? You know what I mean? Like here, because everybody's so contentious here. Yeah. People are very contentious. You know, like they're always like yelling and honking and you just got to deal with it. Like right. the other day I bumped into somebody super hard on the sidewalk and nobody said anything. We just kept it moving. You know what I mean? It reminded me of living in China. That's a New York thing. You know what I mean? Like, cause you, what are you going to do? Like turn it into a whole thing? Like yeah. somewhere else in another place. I'm not even just saying whatever, like LA, but like another place, it's going to turn into something. No, there's this interesting undertone of like, Hey, keep it moving. Like, you know, you help somebody on the subway or something and you just say things. Nobody got to exchange info. Nobody's like, 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 I don't need to know your name. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Thank you so much for holding the subway door for yeah. me. It's like, no. Cool. You ever saw that video? It's like a biker. He's just like jetting it. And then he runs into like a business guy, business fat dude. Right. They're both cursing at each other. They crash. But then, you know, they're like, what the fuck? Like, yo, you're speeding. Right. And then the fat business guy's like, you know, he's like, he tells the biker, you're speeding. And the biker's like, you're jaywalking. He's like, oh, fuck it. And then they just walk away. <laughs> right, right, right. You know, I was like, that's New York. Yeah, you know, and that's a beautiful thing. That's yeah. hopefully we can still preserve. So, guys, if you have never been to a live comedy show, it is a very unique experience. You know, like it's not for everyone's taste, but you got to give it a shot because the vibes there. Maybe it's part to do with the two drink minimum or something, but the vibes are definitely there. It is different, and it doesn't even matter if like the guy's doing well or if he's bombing. It's still always a good time. It's always a good time, dude. You got to get outside and get around other people, man. I like to think of it as kind of like an Asian. I don't want to just say a community thing. I don't just do it for like the community aspect, but like, yes, come there and see other Asians, bring a date, whatever. You know? I remember one of the first comedy shows I ever went to was Dangerfield. How's that? Oh, it was Rodney, uh, Dangerfield? Rodney Dangerfield. He had a club oh, called shoot, Dangerfield. That was a while ago. A long time ago. Because he's time been ago. gone for a while. Yeah, RIP. Um, by when? And we were in like in the first row, but it's like very intimate. You know, even as an audience member, intimacy it's is very, nice. very intimate. Yeah, you, know? you could touch, you can like grab their leg if you want. <laughs> yeah, technically. <laughs> You know, like everyone can hear you. And it was yeah. just like, it's, it's crazy. It's just your voice. There's, you know, like surrounding the room. And it is definitely more of an intellectual, like humble thing though, because like my friends that are like super cool, you know what I mean? Like always trying to be like the coolest, like shades, like tattoo, setter. like AP Rolex. That's not the <laughs> comedy crowd. Mm. No. Like that's like popping bottles that, you know, like, uh, you like know, whatever Lavo, club. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Shit, Dude, yeah. you want to listen to a bunch of different guys and girls talk and you don't know if they're good or not you know you have to be into some comedy and to do oftentimes that. Yeah. comics were like at some point in their life or throughout their life outsided because that's what makes them a good comic is like that outcast identity different perspectives yes so like is the whole comedy thing a way for you guys not to get burned out because it's like a different channel like a different branch because if you're just doing like the same content for a while or like similar content for a while and not actually getting out or doing like these projects you know like your, your hot sauce over here smart law and the comedy show and everything. Is it like a way for you to exercise different parts of your brain just so you don't burn out from the same YouTube content? It's an interesting way to look at it. I would I say it's it. just like, man, we got a lot of muscles from our upbringing <laughs> that we don't always get a flex on YouTube because YouTube wants a certain thing. The algorithm wants a certain thing. So if you have muscles that you never get a flex, they atrophy, right? So, but you spent your whole life building up those particular muscles is good to use them. Like imagine if you were a volleyball player, you love jumping, right? But all of a sudden yeah. you discover you're super good at tennis. In tennis, you don't really jump that often, right? No. It's a lot of lateral stuff. Wouldn't you be like, I miss jumping? You know what I'm saying? And I'm going to lose my ability to, I used to be the highest uh, jumper on the volleyball team. It was crazy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, you, you're just looking for those avenues to still utilize like how you were built. And also, uh, it's to utilize what we've built in our platform. You know, yeah. like Smala obviously it all runs together like i have a way to promote small i have a way to promote asianology it's like we can activate people and I, you have to understand like what like you have to look at what we built like we have to look at what we built as like 
it's what we built, but also a gift and a tool that we should continue to use. And we use for good and we use for projects that we think are interesting and, and beneficial to people. So it's like, yeah, like I've promoted tons of brands on YouTube before. Why not promote, promote our your own brand? Yeah, exactly. Because I think like when you're doing something new, that's exciting, right? That's always yeah. exciting to try something new. Whether or not you're actually going to succeed in it or like do well or bomb or whatever. Not, not every comedian can bring out 70 yeah. people a night. Exactly. You know what I mean? So I'm like, we're, we, I'm thankful for that. You know, I'm cool. Yeah. How was the hot sauce experience? Because that's, I guess that's food adjacent because you guys do food commentary. But like, how was it to produce a physical, like tangible product? Because you guys don't do like a lot of merch. No, we don't. We don't. And probably, probably should have looking back on it. But, uh, you know, I think this is just a product that talks a lot about what we talk about on the channel, you know, mixing things up, knowing like the past and the history and the heritage, mm. but still taking it to a new place. Cause that's what we talk a lot about being Asian. We always tell people it's like to be what I believe is going to be the most optimal, like Asian I identity in the West. Yeah. You actually have to know everything about being Asian, know everything about being Western to like come up with it. I think a lot of people are feeling their way through the dark and it's like, if I was to just make it all metaphorical or whatever, but to Smala, it's like, that's, you know, half Italian, half Chinese. It's something also, it's like your love song, like you grew up on it and you want to make an interpretation of it, you know? Yeah. And it's something that people can use and make their life better. You know, I mean, we could sell t-shirts and I got a lot of friends that make great money off t-shirts, but if I don't have a good t-shirt design, I don't want to try to sell you something that you don't need. Yeah. yeah. You don't need another t-shirt. Probably. You don't. You don't cut. The world doesn't need another t-shirt. Shout out to Richie Lee Collection. This is an amazing t-shirt. <laughs> no, that's a dope no, t-shirt. We're, we're, we're talking about something. We're talking about something. This is the same brand from my friend, Richie Lee. But Smala is something that you can carry with you. And you're like, you feel it. You taste it. And I think that's an interesting experience. Because um, it's kind of like a Mala buzz for people who don't yep. want the, the one that's like super authentic. And it's fun. You see me, I could pour it on pizza. I'm like, hey, you want some? You want some? You want some? What can you do? It's going to mac and cheese. Like I if said. you take the actual <laughs> put it on a jar and then it's almost like if you actually put the full on Chinese chili oil, which I love yeah. on pizza, it's not, it doesn't fully taste right because it's not Western enough. Because the flakes yeah. kind of like throw it off a little yeah, bit. And you can obviously put Calabrian chili oil from Calabria on the pizza too, but this is adding a whole nother Eastern element in there too. What was the hardest part about doing the whole hot sauce thing? Well, just keeping it going. Like, you know, we oh. didn't make it yet. You know, we just sold our first batch. We're almost sold out of it. So please congrats, get yours. Congrats. Uh, Dragon 15 if you want 15% Yeah, yeah off. Dragon but 15 if you want 15% <laughs> Plug away. Plug away, dude. It's almost like what now? Like, we got to keep going. Like, just because you did one good round, yeah. you got to keep selling. I think expanding it. You know, there's all this, like, background stuff that you actually really don't know about until you get into, like, food manufacturing. There's, Cons, like, there's, like, there's, there's all soul. those it's levels. It's tough, right? I assume, yeah. There's people who got to eat off it. There's a manufacturing. There's delivery, shipment, all this stuff. There is cost. Like, I'm not going to say we Margins made Margins are slim. Margins are always uh, well. You try to make the margins better, right? That's the whole point. And then over time, di distributors want it. Your margin, you gotta, they gotta take their cut. So all this other stuff. So yeah, now it's got more complicated than now. It's not just merch now. Now I'm mm. trying to get other people to buy it so that they can sell it. To yeah, it brought people. us into a whole new ecosystem. It's like you're talking to supermarkets, food distributors, chefs, food press, supermarkets. It's like a lot of stuff that you weren't really interfacing with prior to. Hey Ben, you got to plug at H Mart. I'm trying to get into H Mart. Yeah, um, auntie, just because you happen to be Korean. Auntie, yeah, I have three. So hold yeah. on. <laughs> uh, guys, check out right now. Use promo code. What was it again? <laughs> Dragon fifteen. Yeah. Dragon fifteen. There it goes. Hey, but mom. the good thing is, like, you've done so much food content that you know a lot of people like there are there are in that area, right? So it's it's a little bit easier it's to fun. like get people to try it out. And, and, and it's a space. Honestly, there's a lot of Asians in it. A there lot is. of Asians own f small. CPG brands that they want to grow to be medium sized brands to big brands. Like there's a ton of Asians in the food ecosystem, whether we're talking about purveyors of brick and mortar restaurants or right. on the packaging side, like yes. second generation owners that want to modernize their parents, like mm -hmm. Morfabi brand from overseas. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> yeah. there's no. every level. You can't believe how many Asians are involved in yeah, it. Yeah, it's a good community, man. I met a lot of nice people that are very helpful and everybody's cool in the consumer packaged goods that's what cpg stands for yep. and so it's like in this kind of food because asian food is good and asian sauces are good this is our friend tree from austin he got fierce whiskers he opened his own distillery he's making his own bourbon different types of bourbon i was gonna too. say he made both of these right here both of them both Pom of them. choy and then uh and this, is a, this is a premium small batch 
pot stilled. I don't even know what that if, means. If you want to try it afterwards, we can't. I know you. We'll be taking that two bottles home. Don't worry. Yeah, we are. <laughs> <laughs> so, yo, guys, turn around that way right. real quick. I didn't know you guys were taking them. All right. <laughs> it's a nice looking bottle. Where can they get uh, Smala Hot Sauce again? Smalasauce.com. There you go, guys. I'll put a link down below for, for that, okay? Yeah. And you got the comedy show that's going on every single month or so. Great show, Kinda by the way. I got a lot of like little, like, I don't want to say little stuff, but stuff going on. Yeah, I was going to say, you guys are busy, man. You guys are always busy. Making the product. Staying busy. Having a comedy show may seem little, you know, I guess, relative to like what else you have going on, but each individual thing takes a lot of goddamn work. Yeah, I got a lot of stuff I need to promote, guys. Yeah, you do. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm proud you know, of it. Just, we just don't say shit. That's the whole so, show. Right, just going to take it away. <laughs> So, all right, number one, we got. But but you guys know, I mean, just like your guys' own podcast, it's self driven. Nobody asked you guys to make the podcast, right? Like, I don't yeah. know if you guys had a hundred people around you shaking your shoulders every day. Oh hell no, oh, hell fucking no. no. They probably were like, they're probably, and maybe even initially, sometimes your friends even try to downplay it. Like, oh, they were trying guys, to beg us to stop. <laughs> you guys must have a lot of time on your hands. <laughs> I didn't ask for this, and you go, well, "What's going on?" In a way, and this sounds great. It's like you're a grown ass person who had a vision for what you wanted to put out in the world that didn't exist. So you went and did it. You know what I mean? It's not about what other people ask for or what they, to be honest. I mean, like you, you could, a lot of times the audience doesn't know that they even want something until yes. it's created. Hey, I'll tell you this, shout out to you guys. I do think starting a podcast is not hard, keeping it going and being growing it tough. Uh, that's a lot to do. And you guys Extra are doing top. it. Extra no, top. but you guys are doing it. Because nobody's doing it out of like, there's these ultra Asian enclave zones, right? Probably the three most noteworthy in America. Let's just say two realistically for first gen, like super linked to the motherland. One is San Gabriel Valley. The other one is Queens. Yeah. Those are your two like super, super Asian zones, right? And it's it's different types of Asians. Right. Yes, they're more, I guess, predominantly Chinese, but also most Asians in the world are predominantly Chinese. Yeah. Statistically. Yeah. <laughs> like, so it's like, it's fact but, of life. But, but, but it's like, uh, <laughs> the fact of life. Ben's like, I've had it accepted for three decades. So, you know, <laughs> yeah, I gotta take it. Yeah. So it's like, it's just, nobody is producing a, a podcast about those areas. Like you guys though, analyzing some minutia that it's almost like you wouldn't know unless you, are in one of these super area Asian zones. Right? I appreciate that you like to put such a nice spin on our. Yeah. Like, I was gonna say a lot of it. I, I owe it to this guy actually. It's a lot the of Chinese genuine bullshit. Because you know, just by the way, putting <laughs> Chinese guy doing all the work. I didn't say it like that. Hey, yo, the that's Korean true. guy comes in and adds the flash. Though. That's true. I'm not the saying flash. it like that. I can't. No, you need, just you need the duo. You need the butt. I can't do it without this guy. Like he literally does everything. He's like the, you know, the brainiac of the shit. All right, get off my dick. Let's let, let's move <laughs> on with this thing. Okay. So future, future. You've been doing it for 10 plus years. You got a lot going on right now. You're doing a lot of the same stuff. You're doing like a little bit of different stuff because I saw you been like steering away from food a little bit, right? Doing some more social commentary right now. Like what's going on with you guys in the medium and the future? Like where do you see you guys going? We still do a lot of speaking engagements at colleges and corporate gigs, um, different, uh, even the sometimes book. online. Yeah, I, think I got a book. Or it's working. Book oh, that nice. I've been working on. That's full of like super hot takes, like even like hotter takes than I would I be willing say super to. Super hot chicks. I was <laughs> like, holy <laughs> shit! Sign me up for five. Bro. Ben's like, oh, hot takes about <laughs> take five. Shit. No, count yeah, me out. Take my money. ABG calendar. <laughs> ABG. That's uh, a, yo, that's not a bad idea. Actually, that's a actually book, a pretty good idea. A dude. book on how to date ABGs effectively would actually sell. It sadly would sell enough. very well. It would sell very well. Get buff, get tats, <laughs> and do wild, edgy things. Uh, that usually is a pretty good. Uh, Oh shit! Stack. I would say future, future. Talking about your future, <laughs> yeah. but it's like you know, we just want to do more, and we're still interfacing with the uh, mainstream, still doing stuff like that. Still want to grow YouTube, dude. We got so much stuff that we haven't like even fully even delved into, and like so many ideas. I mean, we were doing even short films for a little bit, working with a lot of filmmakers. That's when I started learning about all these like focal lengths and all this like lighting stuff. There's more of them like yeah. like movie movie stuff. But like, you know, that that's like pretty hard. I realized. So I'm like, you know, you know, just dabbled in a few things. But, you know, I'm pretty excited. You, you know, know a I lot to of be stuff. honest, I don't know how all these brands converge. I know that they're all under umbrellas of like bung bros. Yeah. OK. But it is interesting. And I guess like I'm not I can't tell you exactly where everything is in like four years. Yeah. But I just know that steadily working at these things, it's going to turn into something. And yeah. it's just going to, it all does align and falls under a similar, like, I don't want to say like maker, like we're the, like, you know, it's all us, yeah. but we want to do some brick and mortar stuff too Yeah, that would oh, be cool, in New York too. I mean, that's a lot of stuff going on. So we'll see. But I mean, obviously YouTube is still like the passion is still the crux of it. Yeah. Um, but 
yeah, who knows? I mean, small lot blows up, maybe it becomes a bigger thing, and we got to hire a team for that. Right now, it's yeah. just us. So, so if like OnlyFans like approach you guys, <laughs> like Snoop Dogg, oh yeah, like, oh no? Let's take a look uh, at the deal, yeah, man. Let's show let's, me the. Uh, just take a look at the deal. Show me the content. Show me the content. Yeah. <laughs> David or both of us, Fun Bros. That would be weird. I don't know what content they'd want, but anyways, <laughs> I, I've got a bunch of questions from our viewers, and I'll try to get them from the back of my head. There, so uh, a lot of people want to know, like, what's it like to work with your brother? What's it like to work with your sibling? So close and for so goddamn long. Good question. Because from personal experience, Ben and I have been friends for as long as like some siblings have been siblings for. So I kind of like feel what you guys are feeling but at the very least i don't have to go home to him every single night right like how has this uh That's a funny word, but relationship yeah. been no it i mean it is a relationship it's a family yeah it's both family it's friends and it's a business relationship too yeah who wants to go first on this Man, i mean honestly <laughs> i would just say you got to just work through it i mean you got to like just keep the mission first i always say like you know, I, I have people in my extended family that are brothers that don't get along, like cousins who are actual full brothers who don't even like each other. They don't even want to be in the room for with each other for more than like an hour. And it's like, man, it's just something. I just know that nothing that crazy happened for it to be that serious. You know what I mean? Because you just got to feel the mission of what you're trying to accomplish together so deeply. It's almost like I'm sure it's like being in the military together. Not everybody in the same platoon or whatever the, they don't they don't all like each other but if you're on a war you better yeah. set aside whatever these differences are and just get it done like just look at andrew's face to his reaction <laughs> i think in any uh long-term partnership whether you're business partners for a long time or you're in a any type of relationship or family right business i think that uh you there just has to be respect and communication just like any relate like that's not that's for literally any you guys need respect and communication yeah right even if you guys just being friends and then uh yeah that's true so you have to be able to have respect and communication with each other to keep it going and yeah keeping the same mission in mind um obviously we're family we spend a lot of time together we even play ball together but i you do think do you need your together. space i think you need no. your space and you need boundaries and as you mature you know you just have those conversations and that's all it is so do you guys want to take trips away from each other like actual vacations separate of each other like is that something that sometimes you need to do every once yeah, in a if there's a good reason i mean if there's a yeah if there's a reason to if there's a reason to work together if there's work and we're getting like for example paid then <laughs> we're traveling together no, like no sometimes uh, for speaking gigs we go out individually like oh just really one person yeah oh because Obviously, there's a lot of stuff that you got to keep running, and it is difficult to run that on the I road. I have done some shows without David and vice versa. Um, yeah. But, yo, I think being able to operate without each other, at least temporarily, is key. Oh, absolutely. Super key. Yeah. Because you cannot just keep it. When Always you're young, together. you don't care because like we were in a house in LA, like 626 together, yeah. and we had like friends packing it out, and our production guys were there, and it was also like college. Mm. So that's why for like five years, you didn't think about this long-term stuff at all you were just going going it was fun 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 work 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 build build and then you're like yeah things you know you slow down a little bit and then you're kind of like all right well we need to like we're getting older now so it's good that you guys are on the same page because i think like that's what it takes to have something like this be sustainable long term because if one guy was too heavily reliant on the other or you know whatever i think it really wouldn't work out because eventually things will uh, get to the point where there's some you know, bad will that's built up if one person's carrying like a little bit too much of the weight. But the fact that you guys have that same vision and you're doing the same amount of work and you understand all parts of it together and like separately, I think that makes it a lot like there'll be less bumps in the road. Obviously, you're going to have like it's always those always everything is bumpy. Like, but yeah, I mean, like you just try to. Yeah, you just got to attack forward. I mean, it's just like any successful business, man. You just seen people, they just got to work through it. You know, or probably marriages are like the same way too, right? Like, yeah, it like is. it's not going to be the, the first learn. six months for the yeah. next six years to the next 60 years. It's always up, up and down. Yeah, you got to learn, uh, continue to grow. All right, something are, sounds all very cliche, man, know, but yeah, it's true. It's, it's true. true. Yeah, I mean, I've seen so many people like in this Asian game. I mean, any game, right? But like specifically for Asians, it's like I've seen so many people come and go, you know what I mean, in this space. And like, you got to th think there's like a checklist of things that a duo or whatever squad or organization or a brand needs to constantly check off. And that list is probably checked like every day. And the, sometimes people got it all, but sometimes it goes away. You know, that's why you've seen people be in the space and come in and come out. But there's only a few people where it's like, 
they're hitting all the, enough of the check marks all the time. I guess the other plus side is like having two people as opposed to one person. That's the main um, operator of the thing. You kind of like can't support each other because right? there there has to be times when one person is down and the other person maybe is more active and will like step up in lieu of the other person. Like that is the plus side of having multiple people. When you're by yourself, let's say you're in like a, like a bad month or a bad week or so, you still got to do what you got to do, but you can't do it as well. You guys can at least like hopefully, I, I assume like carry the weight when the other one's like off game or yeah. something. You know what I noticed about the solo creators is they like, sometimes they're like super successful, but when you meet them in person, they're sometimes kind of weird. <laughs> Yo, <laughs> most creators, your idols, you know, like the thing that say never meet the people that you never, never, never meet, meet your, your idols, heroes. Yeah. yeah, never meet. Your it's kind of like that because they're never like that way on camera, which kind of leads to some other questions that we got, like off camera, on camera. Obviously, we've seen you off camera and everything. Do you guys feel like, and I kind of feel this way sometimes too, but like not to such a crazy extent. Like there is kind of like a persona that you put on when the cameras go on, right? Maybe it's not a different persona. Maybe it's you, but to the hundred percent non-stop right maybe you are like that but in real life you're not like that all the time yeah. you guys kind of like feel like that like when the cameras roll things change a little bit i don't feel like there's that big of a gap to be honest i mean i, I know what you're saying like some people there's a bigger gap than others yeah okay if you were to watch our videos from eight years ago and talk to us today of course there yeah, would be a gap a change, yeah. because our content right now is more similar to us in person yeah so i right now the gap is not big but I know that people in the past, and I think it's more so an issue with their expectations, where certain videos we used to deliver, like, very, like, different types of Asian girls, who's it, is it, and we don't talk like that in person. Right. Because that's just, like, that's it presenter. Like super yeah, that's animated. ridiculous. And then people, like, literally, I'd have, like, people be like, you guys talk differently. I'm like, why the <laughs> f*** would I talk like, <laughs> like that? Like, in real life. Like, I'm, like, I'm on speed in that video, <laughs> but now I'm, like, not on drugs i'm okay like you know yeah. what i mean so, so yo i'm just relaxed yeah just, me just chill. i'm chill to me i know it's different like other people that i feel like they're more americanized they more go off the energy and the feeling that you have but for me i think i'm my brain still works a little bit more asian where i'm always focused on what i said the content as opposed to the, the context content, the facts the observations the insights the news that i covered the hot takes i gave more than the energy but i noticed that the more westernized you are and you could be an Asian that's like more become more became more westernized in your thought process or your analysis. You more go off the feeling yeah. and the delivery. I mean, David does not. David like he yells on the podcast. I know on a hot pot boys. He he's not talking like this. No, that's actually, true. He's like yeah. come on, like we're like, like we're like, right, I'm like you're like right at my ear or like on my ear. But you're yeah, slightly you more laid back in real life. Yeah. <laughs> I could hear David. So yeah. So that already. I mean, we can tell you that's the difference right now. Yeah, that's but, true. That's true. All right, next big question that people want to know. Um, how good is your Chinese? Now, we're separate people on this same. Okay, yeah. separate people. <laughs> you sprinkle in some Chinese here and there. Who sprinkles in the Chinese? Both Actually, of you, both both of you do, sprinkle yeah. in some Chinese, okay? To me, knowing the Wait, language... You're a Mandarin speaker, right? I'm Winzo, but I speak a little bit of Mandarin because okay. I'm learning that. My wife speaks Cantonese, so I... You've heard it all. I've heard it all. So I can understand like what's good or bad. Even though I cannot personally speak, I can understand what's good and one's always considered a very hard diet it's a very hard, hard diet it's the devil's language well thank you. <laughs> can you, you you gotta speak some after we give our answer can you speak some ones oh, just okay sure fair enough so how good is your chinese who wants to go first and like what is the history on why it's good bad or mid-tier well i think you gotta start with david and then it goes to on me. an abc level on the abc for, level for american born chinese abc man honestly i gotta be because you can do both that's super americanized that can like do all these Americanized things. Yo, See, David, that's of, a lot of disclaimers before you give your answer. Because I was going to give myself a high number. I was going to give myself a seven. I was going to give myself a seven out of 10. That's why I needed to say it all yeah, that. Yeah. Wow. Because I'm not like somebody who like sits and watch C dramas all day, like, and watches dubbed over animes. And like, I'm just not like that. You know what I mean? Like I know. Yeah. So David can walk into Cantonese and Mandarin spots okay. and have a conversation oh, with sure. pretty much anybody there. Oh, Good. maybe not about like, politics but like great you know, school conversation i can't host the tv show of yeah like no, 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 no. but to get stuff news done, is hard to watch yeah dude, yeah. yeah that's because you've lived in china for a little bit right yeah so it's like conversational stuff just getting around so that's why i said abc level because to me abcs are so not good so at it went from this to abc level now we're in this <laughs> on an actual on an actual chinese person scale i'm probably like a 2.75 out of 10 yeah yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah that's man. a very specific if david's 2.75 on a chinese scale i'm like 
I'm like negative, dude. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're the younger brother. I feel like, you know, as it always goes with siblings, the parents put the most effort, like, at the beginning, sure, right? No. And, like, towards the end, they put less and less effort. So, I didn't put in the work that David did. So, I, I, I got to say, I just didn't. I just didn't. I didn't pick it up as much. I don't know if naturally I'm as great as soaking it up. But it's true that our parents spoke English to me. They, they, oh. David and my sister still grew up speaking some Cantonese when they were kids. Right. That was their language that they communicated at a young age. Okay, okay, okay. But, uh, so I don't even have that in my bone. But that's not fully the full excuse. Is uh, <laughs> I didn't study it enough. Yeah. Um, but now my Mandarin is uh, better than my Cantonese. Oh, really? Yeah. But your parents speak but Cantonese, But trust me, right? I'm not no, I'm shitty half, at both. They're half, half. Our parents... Our, our dad is Cantonese, or our dad's from Hong Kong. He's half Shanghainese. Our mom's from. But they speak China. both. They speak three. They speak two dialects yeah. and then English fluently. Yeah. Oh wow. They're fluent. both fluent in each other's languages. Well, my dad's Mandarin accent is kind of weird because he's <laughs> Cantonese, but he can say everything. Yeah. And my mom's Cantonese accent because she's naturally Mandarin is weird. Is the other weird way. Too, yeah, yeah. But they can communicate. Oh, okay. So the sure. accent's not there, but the language and the context and the words and the vocab is all there. And, they're and they're they both like, can understand Shanghainese. And they can understand like wow. news Man, and uh, that super level. High and you level. guys just destroyed all that by, by not learning enough. Well, right? I think they chose, uh, I don't know. Like they thought I had a speech. You know what's weird? Young, but... here's, here's the weird thing. The kids who feel the most Americanized and yeah. can ping with like other races really well Typically, they're much worse at their parents' language than the yes. kids. You know what I mean? Like the uh, super yeah. Americanized crowd, unless they're super rich, like an Eileen Gu or something like that, they're generally, it's like you either pick the Americanized pathway where you're like, I'm working at the marketing department and I'm like <laughs> firing off jokes, or you're like, oh, I'm with my people in an ethnic enclave and I can talk with all the uncles, but I'm not good at talking to white or black people. Right. Do you, it's, I'm not saying that's 100 out of 100 people, but it seems like that dichotomy and that hard choice exists, right? From what you guys have seen. 100%. I would say like even me, my English is very good because I grew up with friends that were like, some of them were Chinese, obviously, but none of us were Chinese kids speaking Chinese. Right? We were Chinese kids speaking English. So like, that's just where I gravitated towards. And I didn't have siblings to speak that with me. My parents were working like 18 hours a day, so they didn't have time to speak with me. So just like by sheer environment and where I was, just like naturally English was what I picked up. You know, it's just like playing sports. Like, if you're super good at football, you're probably not going to be super good at soccer and super good at basketball. Yeah. It's not that there's nobody who isn't good at all three, but it's rare because just the distribution of time and who you were spending time with yeah. is different. Like, you can't be good at everything in the world, you know what I mean? And be a number one good at playing instruments or whatever, you know. Do your parents, like, give you a hard time so about it? Like, with, you know, speaking it? Or they kind of like, ah. Oh. We give it, we give no, it up. I don't think they gave up. I mean, I, if I tell them like, hey, mom, speak more Chinese and then we'll speak Chinese and try to like work practice. On. Right. But my mom's so funny. She's like, she's like, Andrew, I don't care what type of girl you marry, but, you know, I'd like her to speak Chinese. I'm like, <laughs> I don't even speak Chinese. What are you? How you? She's like, I will try to teach her some. You didn't teach me some. What are you talking about? <laughs> she just wants that grandkid. That's what she really wants. Laying the foundation for the grand. I think par parents are weird with that, you know, because it's like language. It is a link to the cultural heritage. It is, oh, it is. no yeah. doubt. It is, Absolutely. but it's not the only link. But it is and it isn't. So, what if you're a really good cook of the, like your grandmother's dishes right. to the point where you're so good you reinterpret it with American techniques and you still understand the root of it, but you are just bad at having a conversation. Mm. But but then you could all right, let's say for example you're you're good at talking to the grandparents, right? But you don't know anything. You don't support the culture. You don't support the community. Yeah. yeah. I've seen both of those happen. That's true. That's true. I, I think I do a good job of making up for it. Yeah. Because I know also. a lot of kids who are more whitewashed or less, who don't do nothing for the culture that okay. can speak it better than me. For fair sure. Enough, fair enough. Tons of people. Yeah. Yo, Which I'm not dumb. Like everybody has their like, cult, like again, language is part of culture. Yeah, but if you're absolutely. not using the language for the culture, then what's the point? Yeah, that's true. You know what I mean? You're just doing it for yourself. I'm, like I'm, you have. I'm, you know, I'm trying to. We we push we we we're pushing the culture forward in my like, opinion. Like I was telling Wendy before, like in K Town, like there's like black girls, white girls, Spanish girls that speak way better Korean than me. Yes, I'm like, and then they talk to me in it. I'm like, look, I'm not gonna front. My Korean's just garbage. You don't have to do that. It's okay. I believe you. I think what you're saying sounds Korean. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds vaguely oh, Korean. Yeah, but you understand what they're saying, right? Like, I'm not I gonna lie. I'm it. oddly attracted to you right <laughs> yeah, now since you started speaking Korean. Like, but can you cook? And then it's <laughs> wow. like we'll see from there. You know. But yeah. Do you get with those chicks? 
Because <laughs> there's, like, there's always a, there's a lot of the questions here. There's a lot of non Asian women that are like fetishizing Korean dudes in 2024. Yes. And I totally we, I, I can't I can't say have that you Chinese dated guys some got of the them. same thing. So. Yes. you've dated yes, some. Sir. As a yes, married sir. person, can I give my opinion? That's like if they took the no, effort. No, Ling. Oh, hold, hold on, <laughs> dude, 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 dude. If they took the effort to learn a language in order to like go up to someone like Ben. I was like, yo, give her props for that. Right? She, yeah, I wish she's I, yeah. fetishizing, maybe, maybe, but she put in mad effort to learn a fucking language or enough of a language to approach Ben. So I could see you, especially because you got the physicality for the non-Asian girls because it's almost <laughs> like uh, yeah. they're BTS mixed Ooh. with Chris Pratt Ooh. mixed with uh, yeah. a bigger dude, like a bearish, you know, uh, like a bear. Yeah. Dave like Bautista, this. Dave Bautista, Chris Pratt. So you and got BTS. the Guardians from K-Town. <laughs> Guardians of K-Town. <laughs> Like you totally could pull like uh be that Chebel, the evil Chebel boss's bodyguard. I do. I want to be like like, like in the, in a cage. I'm gonna be in like John Wick five. I'm gonna be like Asian henchman number five. You're the guy from Tokyo. I, I die. And your main move is just a power slam. Re- no, yeah, pa- cracking people's back and just snapping their spine, just going. Ooh. And I just throw people. Yeah. To right? be stereotypical, like, I could see some Latino girls who who know Korean like like. Oh yeah. Because they, they throw like Papi at us. Oh shit. Opa Papi. Oh papi, shit. Opa. Hajima. <laughs> oh, Hajima. Oh, oh male, male, uh, male, male. You know, hey, male, they, male. They, they love uh, the Korean corn dogs, too. Hey, yo. Hey, hey, We're talking hey, about the food, right? I mean, like, is that actually, a cold word? I'm talking oh, about the, the actual, actual food. I'm sorry. Two hands. Sorry, I paused. Just two hands. And they use two hands not, on the ground. Not, ah, the jungle dogs. Just, 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 let's the talk jungle about dogs? real food. Let's <laughs> talk about real food. Let me let me pivot this conversation towards real food, okay? Is it a corn dog or topoki? Which one is it, Ben? Is it corn dog or topoki? Oh, man. I played the first day silence. Well, yes, um, yes. Food, food. Let's talk about food. Uh, Actual you guys, food. You guys, real food, real yes, food this yes. time. You guys do a lot of food content. I'm always curious with people like you, how much do you actually cook? Because I know just from sheer necessity, you guys have to go out and eat a lot, right? That's just part of the game. You no know, creating content, whatever. Like, do you guys cook? Do you I, like I, to I cook? Think I, can, I, th- I think I can cook moderately well, considering uh, I, I have a passion for cooking. I think I can do it. I'm capable. Right now, we're mostly uh, I'm mostly working the air fryer, <laughs> but I'm mastering the air fryer. You're like a, you're like a Michelin rated <laughs> air fryer. <laughs> I'm the v- Gordon Ramsay of the air fryer. <laughs> it's like you're like yelling corner. I would consider myself yeah, one of those meme people on like Reddit or whatever Instagram that are like super pro air fryer. I am I, you two with the air fryer. Well, we we, we share it. I know you so, share an air fryer, but, but, but I can hit the pan too. Don't okay. don't get it twisted. I know how yeah, to. Chef? I can I can toss with one hand. Oh yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, oh, you've been in so many kitchens. You think you would just by like osmosis pick up like a lot of techniques? <laughs> oh, I think it is. Right? <laughs> That's how you make fried rice. I mean, just, just by being around, yeah, just do it blindfolded, and all of a sudden there's fried rice in front of you. Yeah. Let's just say seven days a week. You you skip breakfast because you're fasting. That's two meals a day. <laughs> That's fourteen meals a week, right? Of those 14 videos, how many are you cooking for yourself in that air fryer? That's a real question. Take a second. Take a second. Out of 14? Out of 14. Like 15. Seven. For real? Oh, shit. Well, if we're both here and we both cook, it's kind of like for both people. Oh, so we just actually, make a little extra and just a lot it. Of, like, a lot of it is like when you go out to eat, you're going to... It's not going to be healthy. Long story short. Of course short, not. Because the, the goal of the place is, is just to really either sell drinks or to stimulate your dopamine... And there's certain things, sugars, sugar, fats, salt, a lot of hidden salt, sugar, that uh, hidden refined sugar. carbs that stimulate dopamine. Yeah, like literally, bread hits your dopamine receptors. But it, for guys, it's uh, it also stimulates estrogen produc- uh, production. So it's like it's that's why guys got to stay lean. Guys, stay off the bread. No, stay you got to stay bread. green, lean, and clean. Honestly, <laughs> you. It sounds like such a cliche, but it literally, if you just say green, lean, and clean. All that other stuff, you know, how people are like trying to fast and do keto and yeah. light keto, lazy oh, keto. We're talking about that. If you just keep it lean, green, and clean, simple. Literally rhyme those three words. You don't have. If you do that, you don't have to do anything else for the rest of your life. If you can Nothing. literally follow that, yeah, I'll, I'll tell you this about delicious food, man. I think, and it's I'm we're privileged in the sense that we did we seeked out a lot of different restaurants and ate at restaurants as part of our yeah. So I understand that we are not the average person. We are yeah. we have more time to spend on food than the average person, you know, cause we, we were able to make it work for us. But after having a lot of delicious food and eating at all these different restaurants and some meals we got comp that were really nice, a lot of fusion stuff, a lot of cool stuff. I'm like, I go back to the basics. Yeah. What's your basics then? Uh, oh yeah. Uh, Grand on Grand Street is the most 
frequented restaurant that I've paid for in my entire life. Well, it's not a Chinese restaurant. Nope. Although it is, I mean, it's has Chinese it's dishes. Old, it's Chinese yeah. via, like, you know, whatever. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's, pho is like, I could eat Stable, that all day. Yeah. And it's just like. That's true. And it's just, that's the, that's the, I had all this food. Pho is probably like a top 10 dish in world history. Yeah. I, I really think it's so. A you think it's food. top 10 of like the, the goats in world yeah. history. You might be man. hungry two hours later, but that, when that too, <laughs> until that you're, you're Especially like, Especially now where they're taking pho with the big uh, shank rib and all that stuff. Yeah. Like it's going crazy. Yeah. That's true. You get like a whole lobster in there now yeah, and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. I think, I really think pho is like something, because it's actually like. It has some even a little bit of French influence as well. But so. yeah, anyways, guys, check out Smala sauce. It goes well. On everything. I was just gonna say, it, it, pho will yeah. go really great with that. Yeah, okay, let's does. wrap this up with a couple of small things. Like besides pho, is there any like big things or dishes, meals, whatever cuisines that like stand out to you that you would always want to get? Maybe not as frequently as pho, but like that's your go-to. Meal. David has this one dish that like is so hard to find. Oh, what? Yeah, yeah. No, it's called uh, what Mandarin. It's called yellow braised chicken. It's called Huangmen Ji Fan, and that's like uh. It's very similar to uh, Chinese chicken. Jimdok. Jimdok. You know what I'm talking Doc about? Doc Jim? What language are you speaking right now? Doc Jim, Jimdok. I heard it called <laughs> both ways. Yeah. It's like that soy braised yeah. chicken dish. in, But but it's like, it's got a soy flavor as well to yeah. it. And it's. Uh, Which region is it from? It's from Shandong. Okay. That's why. Uh, and it's just so good. And it's considered the number one construction worker meal in China. It made oh, it's a very blue collar meal. Okay, there you go. But blue collar like, meals specifically in Northern are China. some of the best. They because are. Just they are. Hearty. Yeah. The hearty you know? just hits the spot. Yeah. Pop up a photo of Huangmen Jifan yellow braised chicken. There's this place called Yang's. I'm telling you, you can add things to it. You can take things out depending on what your tastes are. Yeah, yeah. Is it like, it's the best chicken stew, but it's not a stew. It's like a... Is it like Hyannese chicken style? No, no, no. It's no? different. It's different. You guys no, just no, got to no. take... It's, it's, it's more like, like a pot. Jim Doc or Doc Jim Yum. I, I would like... I love dim sum, but I, that is something that I eat less of. Why? To be honest. Because of carbs? Not just that. Can't I just up. like... I think that it's uh, it's just a lot of meatballs. <laughs> it's just a lot of that's what dim sum is it's a lot, a lot of meatballs of balls. meatballs wrapped in tofu skin meatballs wrapped in a crystal skin meatballs wrapped in a I think a like, wheat skin I think a lot of Asian Americans we kind of get stuck on just what we got exposed to growing up and we don't even we don't even appeal back to layers like Cantonese there's this uh, kaipo which is like a it's like a, a chicken hot pot with coconut slices in it from uh, Hainan or Macau I think and then like that is even like a deep cut thing that you have to really. There was only like two spots in Flushing that do it, and there's like no spots in the city. It's like all the rare shit. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, I think the rare shit that's popping over there, yeah. that's not necessarily popping over here. We got to get off what our grandparents and our parents only introduced us yeah, to. Yeah, get off that shit, man. <laughs> no, not that yeah. it's. Not that, that, not no, that it's played out or it's whack. <laughs> Sounds like a drug. Like, not that it's played out or it's whack, but it's like <laughs> we to get to know ourselves and we have to like peel back the layers and we have to peel back the layers for other Asians too. Like, like I, I won't just try like pad Thai, right? If you're an Asian and you go to a Thai restaurant and you only get pad Thai, shame on you. Right. Because you being too basic. Yes. And you're not even doing the work to understand other groups that are not your own. And what I think is, and I think shout out, I, I want people to enjoy delicious food and I think they should, but like try to derive as much content or knowledge and experience from it like what i would hate is that people take out you know they go out once a week or twice a week to the city for dinner and then they just go to a restaurant they're like okay i'm trying this new thing but you just eat it and you take a picture and then you don't think about it anymore mm. and i'm like you don't have to blog about it but like ask questions about it learn about it like where does this dish come from even if the server doesn't know just at like make it an experience for you make them ask the chef yeah, yeah make it like a museum for you. Like, who cares? Like, ask questions. You're tipping them. You're paying them. Like, you know what I mean? So derive as much as you can from those experiences and not just the delicious calories. It's yummy food. I get it. But like, make it in an exploration. And that's how you're going to be able to make it worth it more. Because food is getting expensive now. Plus, there's no downside to it. Because if you went there and you got something new, you tried something new, and you didn't like it for whatever reason, you can always default back to the pad time next time, right? That's you can fine. always come back to the exact same place, right? I don't right? know why people are so scared. And it's not, I'm not saying that all people do this, but I know it's like white people or white Americans, they're so scared of not liking something. It's okay to, to not like something. Yeah. There's a lot of Chinese dishes that I do not like. Yeah, but you, you're glad you tried it because you have it in your Rolodex right. in your That's mind. That's why a lot of, even at our friends, our Asian friends' spots who are kind of fusion Asian spots, some of their best sellers are still the burger because they have, because people know that form. Like it's a no-brainer. Oh, right. we're going to a Korean restaurant? Oh, they got a burger? All right, chill. You know, yeah. it's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're just going to get the Korean burger. It's you know familiar. I mean? Yeah, it's, it's familiar. a familiar form, but like, 
I and I not everybody has the energy because it it does take energy to process new things. Complex identities are tiring to consume. And that's why that's a lot of the issue in politics right now is that everybody has these complex identities. And for some people to try to understand it all, it's like mind boggling to them, which I get it. That is tiring. And that's why to just to wrap it all up, that's why I like your guys' podcast too, because you are talking about things that are not necessary to think about. Like no Asians need to think about the difference between a Cantonese and a Korean bakery. In terms of like them making their parents proud to go to a college or making a lot of money, you would never need to understand It's it. not important, yeah. It's yeah. completely un outside of those the pursuit of those two things, right? Yeah. Or even like being lit at the club, that's completely actually outside of that <laughs> thing. That's your third pillar of your life. But it's like, it's still important to, to do it because then otherwise... Somebody got to do it. Yeah, someone's got to yeah. do it. Someone's, Somebody got to turn this thing over in their mind gonna, and flip it over and then, be examine it. it. Two dumb people from Queens have to get all this shit. The final segment of the podcast is called Ranting and Raving. We each take a couple minutes or just a minute quickly to rant about something shitty going on in our lives. It could be completely unrelated to what we're talking about, unrelated to anything. But it should be personal? It should be personal. Or rave about something good. All right, uh, Ben, you want to kick it off or should I? Go for it, man. All right, so I, I drove in today with my car, and whenever I drive into the city and I park in, in a garage now, I never take my newer car. I always take my older shitty car. Because last time, last month, when I, when I came to the city with my wife, we came in, and it was like a line to get into this garage that we prepaid for on Spot Hero, right? But then I watched the guy probably scratch up three cars as he was moving them back and forth, back and forth and everything. And there was this one car that was like two cars in front of me. He didn't want to wait any longer, so he gave the keys to the guy and said, hey, my car is double parked there. Can you just like pull in whenever you have the time, right? The guy's like, cool, cool, cool. I saw another car from the street, just like sideswipe that car and just leave. So my tip is like, when you drive to the city and you're going to park in, the, in a garage, if you have the luxury of having two vehicles, bring the one that you don't care about yeah, as much. Can. Like, don't bring the nicer vehicle to the mm, city. That's crazy. That guy just like, Yo, he didn't, no that's fucks crazy. Given. Swiping a car is crazy. He did not give a shit. Who had the what, nicest what, car? What yeah, was his what, car? What, like? what were the cars? <laughs> yeah, right? It was a car on car crime, but what, what was, was the, the nicest car? Yeah. There was no nice cars in there. There was just newer cars, I'm trying to say. Oh, it, man. Right? And, and my car is definitely not nice. Just committed like twenty thousand dollars worth of like, damage. Right. Like, plus, property damage plus you would shit. never know, right? You go pick up your car, you tip the valet guy, you get in your car, you, you drive the hell away. No and one's doing like a three sixty inspection of their car when they pick now, up. Now, are valet. you going to snitch on them? No, no, it's it's not my problem. Right. You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I just want right. to move on with my day. No, Five hundred. I'll keep my mouth shut. You know what I'm saying? Like, All right, Ben. <laughs> what do you got? Uh, what's it? So I have an old dog that um, you know, I love him to death and 18 stuff. Eighteen years old. No, no, uh, 17 now. It's just 17. But he's still old, right? So um, what's it? Uh, it's hard raising an older dog, you know? But um, um, my mom, she's very, like, spiritual when it comes to the deaf. She's, like, super Catholic, right? So, like, death doesn't scare her, you know? But she was just, like, she's just, like, nonchalant comes up. She's like, oh, I thought, you, I thought the dog died. I'm like, what the f <laughs> Like, yeah, so she's like, yeah, I thought he died because he just didn't wake up. So I started kicking him. <laughs> and then he just woke up like, what the f Shit. I was like, Mom, what's wrong with you? He's old as. I think he died. I didn't know. I was like, How else do you check? And shit. I was like, Put the finger in the nose, maybe? I don't know. So, oh, yeah, that's a good idea. I could just picture her like nudging a dog. Was, yeah, <laughs> like, with her slippers, just like, like a gas pedal. Like, oh you're, oh, you're, oh, you're awake. Oh, shit, my bad. Like, that's pretty much it. But, uh, shout out to your dog. <laughs> yeah, shout out to my dog. Shout out to your yo. dog. Yeah, yeah, fuck that. Shout out to your mom. Yeah. Shout out to your dog. Cute little guy. That's actually a pretty funny story, but thank you, thank I, I you. Think people would, yeah, maybe, maybe Amer <laughs> Americans might be like, I know it. I, I was just gonna say, you about to hate them. <laughs> yeah, what's that uh, company with the pets and stuff? Uh, there was no animals abuse. She had the soup boiling already. Yeah. She was getting ready. She was getting ready. <laughs> yeah, like a lobster boiling. Yo, shit. I don't know how far back you guys know this skit, but do you guys remember you kicked my dog. No, that, okay. that prank phone call. Oh yeah, that that went viral on Napster like yeah. fifteen Holy years ago. Holy crap! I forgot about That's that. Anyways, I was that the one where it. they called the Chinese restaurant? There was a lot of prank calls. There was a, it was lot a prank of, call I remember, group. I remember that one too. The Chinese were CYK, and they were like calling. I think it was white dudes that were doing. I like think a, I think they were white dudes. Yeah, shout out, sh that was the yeah. first like racist but funny. Honestly. Yeah, the first. <laughs> they, they, are, they were better at. Hey, that's than the kind of comedy that the golden age of comedy. <laughs> 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 the we gotta age. protect that. The more racist, the better, guys. All right, we gotta protect that. All right, guys. I, if you don't have one, I got one. <laughs> we'll go first. All right. Speaking of dogs, too many dogs in the city, man. Too oh. many dogs in the city. There's too much dog shit on the sidewalk. I agree. Oh. These buildings, and sh I live, I love this building, but there's a lot of <laughs> dog owners in this building. 
They don't actually clean up after their dogs. Yeah. And there's a lot of buildings over there. We all know a lot of people got dogs during the pandemic because they were lonely. <laughs> and a lot of people work from home. So they got dogs. They're not training their dogs. The dogs are pooping everywhere. On the sidewalk, there's tons of big dookies <laughs> everywhere. And I'm just like, I don't know if New York was supposed to have this many dogs. And they're not even hunter dogs. They're not dogs chasing down rats. They're not these wolf dogs. Not these wolf, th these dogs that are, can like protect your family. Farm these are like, dogs. These yeah. are just like, okay, Frenchies. Useless. Frenchies are great, but they're very like expensive and useless. <laughs> like, Who decided that the worst city on planet Earth to have a dog needed to have? up the dog volume by, by so, 5x why do you want a shiba in new york you know how much space shiba you know how they these big dogs need spaces of, yeah. to run you think you're gonna you think your dog loves your thousand foot apartment you know what's the worst part like some people will pick up the dog shit with the bags and just leave it on the floor i'm just like what is Wait, the point of that in the bag the little baggie in the same area and they'll just leave it there <laughs> like it's like a fucking you know when you play golf you leave like a quarter and shit like that's where the ball yeah. was why why is why would a dog like New York when there's cars, scooters, people, zoom, 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 trash, there's zoom, not zoom, grass. Zoom. It's just Everywhere. all concrete, you know, yeah. sidewalk. Yeah, it's not good. It's, it's not good. Actually, if you think it's like dog. It's a prison. terrible place for dogs, <laughs> yeah. for big dogs at least. I yeah. guess my one rant would be just um the amount of like cool Asian food from flushing that's like super deep cut whoop, whoop. that makes it into the city. Is too slow. Like oh, you see, it, I, think, I, think, I, think, I think you can get like I think you can get like Tanghulu now at Machi Machi in K Town. But like it, it should have happened like years ago, but it's like very, very slow. Like, you know, like it is true. Like, you know how Manhattan, the Asian food, they have a lot of Asian food, but it's kind of like out of five levels, le maybe level like one, two, maybe level three. Yeah. But the level four, five stuff, Queens only. Queens only, flushing for sure. But yeah. it's like, I don't understand why, what do people just, I think the people who are cooking the three, four, five level Asian food in Queens, they don't believe that the city will take it. Exactly, exactly. But I think that they probably, it probably would though. It, it, but they it, don't it believe kill it. though. Someone has to take that risk and they're not willing to take the risk. Because it is a risk. It yeah. is a risk. It's safer just to do that some to do it in Flushing. Because obviously in a place like Queens where everybody's like so Asian, they want to eat all five levels, one, two, three, four, yeah. five, yes, right? Yes, yes. But there's a, there's a feeling that Manhattanites only want level one and level two, right? Like kind of like, the more surface level. You gotta dishes. put it into a hamburger form or something, and then they'll yeah. be, then they'll be into put it. it yeah. Put it in a burger. You want people to eat something? Put it in a I, burger. I'm just saying. I want more. Somebody got to take. Uh, you know, it's easy for me to just sit and tell people to take the risk because I'm not doing it. Because you're not the one. Do do it. Don't be bill. scared. Do it for us, guys. Do it for yeah, us. Yeah, do it for us, so we don't have to go to flushing. Yeah. Andrew, David, thank you for inviting us into your house. Thank you to the weather gods that it's uh, cloudy today so that the sun is not super bright as behind us so you guys can actually see the nice view behind us. Uh, which bridge is that right there? That is Manhattan Bridge? Yes. All right, guys. If you want to see where they live, find out. <laughs> find this bridge. Yeah. You can geotag them. Yep. Find yes. this exact angle of bridge. See what altitude we're at. I don't, I don't at. think you can miss it. Yeah. See which altitude we're at and then we can figure it out. Uh, dude, thanks for inviting us to your home. Really appreciate it. Thanks appreciate for coming it. on the long podcast. Time a long time in the making. It's been a long time trying to get this together and everything, but I think we had a good time. Uh, yeah. Hopefully, we can have you on, on a future episode. We'll keep it away from your personal history. We'll do like something fun maybe in the future, okay? Uh, <laughs> talk about no, Queens. Fun. No, dude, no, we're about to fun. talk about... You guys are about to do our pod. Oh, yes, oh, yes. Shit. Talk, talk about, about Queens. Talk I want to inter ask you guys about Queens. Oh, damn. Andrew, right. you're the best. Do all the plugs that you need to right oh, now. Oh, yeah. Uh... Check out smallasauce.com. Um, really good chili oil, finishing oil made with real truffle. Uh, mixture between the Italian and Mala chili oil. Check out Ham Choi. This is from Fierce Whiskers Distillery. Asian owned, based out of Austin, made in Austin. A high level, uh, state of the art distillery. There's some whiskey nerds. Those are just brands that we want to shout out. Uh, check out Hop Hop Boys. Check out our channel, Asianology. Uh, January 1st, 7.30 p.m. You guys are invited. To come, um, not to do a set, just to be in the. If audience. you guys want to do if five you, minutes, if you guys got a couple minutes, let me know. Yo, you know what's funny? And we can talk about it. Ben has always said he wants to do stand up. I know, but I can see it in yeah. Ben. <laughs> yeah. I can see the. <laughs> Look at you, I point. can see it. It's three minutes. He has always said he it. wanted to do yo, stand up. Yo, I'm gonna let you guys know. If you got yo, three minutes, three seconds. Maybe before we open the show, like the pre, pre like a funny story. You know, just keep it easy. Don't, don't. You don't have to worry about joke structure and stuff like that. Well, Anyways, people are still getting drinks. Yeah, people okay. are very supportive. Uh. I think uh, they'll support a big Korean guy. <laughs> Anyways, guys, uh, check it out. Thank you so much. Uh, shout out to the Worst Asian Podcast. I'm glad we had that Worst Asian Podcast here. So 
can only get better from here up. So. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. All right, guys. If you want to stay up to date with what, what we're doing on a daily basis, follow us on all the social medias, TikTok, uh, LinkedIn, I don't know, Snapchat, whatever, Instagram, at WorstAsianPod. Okay. All right. Until next time, we'll catch you guys next time. Adios. Peace. Bye.